In this video, we are looking at the different shapes of the voids, the empty spaces formed by close packing hard spheres. Let's start by looking at a single layer of close packed spheres. The voids, or holes, are triangular in shape. So, what is the importance of this observation? Remember that the hard spheres represent atoms, ions, or molecules in a crystalline solid. This model of close-packed spheres is especially valuable for describing ionic solids. In an ionic solid, there are combinations of anions and cations. Since the anions are often significantly larger than the cations, one way of describing an ionic solid is close packing of anions with the cations sitting in the holes or the voids created by close packing anions. In this model, these red spheres represent our anions. If we are to place the cations within this two-dimensional layer, they must be small enough to fit inside the triangular holes. Let's place one now. See how small the green sphere representing the cation is in comparison to the red spheres representing the anions? Note also that the cation is occupying a position exactly in the same plane as the layer of anions. The triangular holes created by a single layer of close-packed spheres are the smallest holes in a three-dimensional close-packed structure. Now let's look at the tetrahedral and octahedral shaped voids created by placing a second layer. We start by placing a single sphere of the second layer. Remember that we are placing the sphere directly over top of the triangular hole in the divot created by the first layer. Okay, now let's isolate that blue sphere and the four red spheres that it is touching. And let's color all the spheres red since they all represent the same type of anion. Let's make all the spheres semi-transparent so we can see the void that is created in between them. Can you see that this is a tetrahedral shaped hole? It is defined by four identical spheres occupying the four corners of a tetrahedron. Let's place a cation in this hole. We can see that the tetrahedral hole is directly above the triangular hole created by a single layer. The cation occupying the tetrahedral hole is sitting slightly above the bottom layer. This tetrahedral hole is larger than the triangular hole. Therefore, it can accommodate a slightly larger cation. Okay, now I want to show you a nuance related to the positions of the tetrahedral holes in a close packed structure. To do that, let's just step back a moment. We'll start with our monolayer and put one sphere of the second layer on top. Let's highlight the tetrahedron we have created. We can see that we are looking down at one of the four corners of the tetrahedron. The void created inside this object is a tetrahedral hole. Since the corner of a tetrahedron is pointing up towards us, let's call this a T plus hole. By placing two more spheres onto the second layer, we can create another tetrahedral object. Notice now we are looking at the base of a tetrahedron. This tetrahedron is oriented in the opposite direction to the first one we looked at. 
the tetrahedral void defined by these spheres is a T minus hole. Thus, an equal number of T plus and T minus holes are created by placing the second layer. Okay, now let's look at the octahedral holes. We're simply going to move one of the blue spheres over. This triangle of blue spheres is sitting on top of a triangle of red spheres. Highlighting these six spheres, we can see that they define an octahedral object. The void created by these spheres is an octahedral hole. Let's occupy the hole with a cation. We can see that the octahedral hole is quite a bit larger than the tetrahedral hole. In summary, two types of holes are created by close packing in three dimensions, octahedral holes and tetrahedral holes. Both of these are larger than the triangular holes that exist in a monolayer or a two-dimensional close-packed structure. Thanks for watching.